welcome back to another video. My name's Lachlan and today we are going to talk about the steam ovens. I'll go through the steam ovens step by step, everything from which trays to use, the water usage, all that sort of stuff. And you'll be able to take all these hints and tips back to your steam oven at home and cook all of your everyday food in the appliance. So come with me, let's go through it and you'll be an expert in no time. So in front of me here, I have some of the different uh, jugs that you may have within your steam oven. Over here on my right, I have the steam combination oven jug. Uh, here I have a steam oven jug in the middle for a straight steam oven. And here I have a jug which you may have in a benchtop steam oven or in older steam combination ovens. So in terms of the jug, it actually doesn't matter what you have. The concepts around them are exactly the same. Basically, with all of them, fill them up with fresh tap water. So cold water from the tap right up to the top fill level. So each jug will have a, a mark where you fill it up to. So fill it up to the top every single time. This one here is exactly the same also. This part removes. So my recommendation would be take this out, fill this up with water, then place this back in and away you go, like so. And then with this jug, you actually have to physically plug it in to the appliance. There's a connection port at the base of this jug and this essentially plugs in. So this forms your kettle in the steam oven, essentially. This brings your water to a boil and then it injects the steam. Whereas if we look at these two jugs, you can see they are just a, a basic looking jug or, or vessel. Essentially what happens is when we insert this into the appliance, a, a hose or a pipe essentially drops down into the jug and it pulls them out and then that goes to a separate kettle compartment and brings that to the boil. So all of the jugs have the same concept around them. Once you've got that steam that injects into your cavity, therefore cooks your food. But as I said, fresh tap water is all you need to do. With these jugs as well, these ones here, you can wash these in the dishwasher if need be. However, make sure your dishwasher isn't any hotter than 55 degrees. As soon as our dishwasher does start to get hotter than 55, we might begin to start seeing that cracking that you might have in some of your plastic containers at home. So this is for all plastics, uh, but make sure, especially if you have coffee machine uh, jugs or jugs like these, we just need to make sure that we don't go above 55 degrees. If we have jugs for our benchtop steam oven, like so. These can't go in the dishwasher, so all I would recommend that you do is wipe these out every so often. You can clean a bit of detergent inside as well, but just be mindful that we don't want to get this electric uh, connection uh, wet. One of the most common questions that we receive here is what steam tray should I use and when should I use it? So first of all, with your steam oven, you will have two different types of steam trays. Here we have a perforated steam tray, so you can see I've got all those holes throughout the tray, and you might have a few different shapes and sizes of the perforated trays. And then also, you have got a solid tray. Once again, you'll have different versions of these. So, basically what I say to people is, you should try and use the perforated tray as much as possible. If I'm steaming vegetables, or I might have a, a dessert in an individual jar or something like that, I'll always place that in a perforated tray. That could be eggs, basically anything that won't fall through the holes and any food that won't drip. If it's going to drip or you need liquid to cook the food, like a rice or a pasta, for example, I would always cook that in a solid tray. So even if I'm steaming some fish, my option is always to go solid. If I'm cooking my rice or any grains, uh, or anything like that, I'll go into a solid tray. So you might actually find yourself using a solid steam tray more often. However, always have in the back of your mind that if you think the food is applicable for a perforated steam tray, then that is the best way to go. So ultimately, it doesn't really matter. If I cooked green vegetables in here and green vegetables in the solid tray, there will be a cooking time difference of maybe 15 to 20 seconds or so. So there is a difference between the two, but will the result be bad in one? No, they'll both be great results. So you don't need to stress about this too much. And the more that you use your steam oven, the more confident you'll get with your choices and it'll become easier each time. So before we go through the controls of the steam oven and I talk you through all the ways that we use it, 
I'm going to get a few things cooking in the background and as these are cooking, we can go through all the other bits and bobs and once we finish talking, these will be finished cooking and we can show the end results. So here I've got maybe the most controversial thing to cook in a steam oven and that is pasta. So basically I tell people if you have a steam oven, you should never boil water on your cooktop ever again. And as a result, everything that you do boil on your cooktop, you can now steam. If you boil it for five minutes, you steam it for five minutes. So here I have some angel hair pasta. Now you could use spaghetti or fettuccine, penne, whatever you have really. This is all I had uh, in my pantry. So I have about half a box total in this tray. So a, a decent amount. It's in a solid steam tray. And I'm simply now just going to cover this in just cold water from the tap. So there's no real ratio here. We're simply just covering the pasta, probably with that much thickness, uh, an inch thereabouts. Um, I also have a pinch of salt in this tray, just like you would season your pasta water. And now all that you have to do is steam this at 100 degrees for the same instructions on the packet. So the packet for this says boil for five minutes. So perfect, I'll do that. Now, in another steam oven here, here I have a, it's a tea drinking cup, but it's a really nice half sphere sort of shape. And I've sprayed this with a bit of uh, kitchen spray. I've got two eggs here. One of them I'll crack into this uh, mold. The other I'll leave in the eggshell. I'll steam these at 100 degrees for about two minutes. And as a result, I will get basically a boiled egg and a poached egg simultaneously. So two very simple things that I can see you cooking at home. I'll get these into the steam oven and then as I said we'll go through everything step by step. So I've focused the camera now onto the controls of the steam oven and I'm just going to take you through the controls one by one. So in the top left hand corner, I'll just turn it on first, we have our steam cooking and in fact if we look at the screen now I've got a descaling warning. So the appliance is telling me that I have seven uses until the appliance locks out and that I need to descale. This is good timing. I'll actually quickly talk about descaling at the end of this video because this is definitely something that you might encounter uh, in all your cooking. So I'll press OK now just to ignore that. Here you can see my temperature defaults to 100 degrees, but if I scroll all the way down, I can cook at 40 degrees also. So I mentioned before, that if you have a steam oven, you should never boil water again, or you should try not to. So when we do that, basically, that would be steaming at 100 degrees. So I'll just pop in this water container so I can continue. Now, when we look at uh, the temperature, so 100 degrees, that is our equivalent of boiling water. So as I said before, if you boil something for five minutes, you steam it for five minutes. So all of your everyday cooking that you normally do is very straightforward in the steam oven. Your vegetables, your grains, uh, potatoes, uh, all of those everyday things. So all of a sudden, we have a good chunk of our everyday cooking that we can cook into our steam oven. If we look at our lower temperatures, our lowest is 40 degrees. Now 40 is an extremely low temperature, but we can actually use this for things like making our own yogurts or proving a bread dough or basically fermenting, I would say. So 40 degrees isn't necessarily a good cooking temperature, but it is a good growing temperature for bacteria. Now, obviously we want to grow bacteria for certain foods to get a result. For example, we want that yeast bacteria to grow when we're making a bread, and this will give us that nice light bread dough. So this can be used to our advantage, but you'll have very subjective uses uh, to cooking with this. And then if we go up in our temperature, you know, 45, 50. So we all have five degree increments all the way up to 100. And depending on the recipe that you're cooking will determine the temperature that you cook and therefore the result given. So if you hop onto mealexperience.com.au, we have a massive range of recipes for the steam oven. All of them will give you a temperature and a time and it's super consistent. Whereas when we look at oven recipes, quite often we'll have a temperature but we might say bake for 45 to 50 minutes. So this is where in a steam oven, the cook time is even more consistent. And for me, that's a massive win because you may not be the most confident cook, 
but just by following the recipes, I can guarantee you that you'll get the exact same re uh, results that I would get in a steam oven, which is fantastic. So I'm just going to cancel this process for now. So for your everyday steaming, you simply select that steaming icon there, select your temperature, select your time, and away you go. We also have here next to it, if I select this, once again, this descaling message will continuously pop up until we descale. So it, it, the appliance makes sure that we get warned uh, quite often, which is good. This is our sous vide. Now sous vide is the only culinary technique which guarantees perfection, essentially. Now, a method where we could use this is cooking a steak, for example. Now, if someone asked me the best way to cook a steak or the only way to guarantee a perfect steak, I would actually say steam the product. And essentially, you only need to find out how you like your steak cooked. So if you like your steak medium rare, for example, that equates to 55 degrees. And then all I do is I steam that product at 55 degrees. So it's a very low temperature, but this actually makes it physically impossible to overcook the product. So you're guaranteed a perfect result. And then once that meat is cooked, you would sear that off on a pan or a barbecue to get that perfect color. So once again, I would hop onto that meal experience website and find some sous vide recipes because this is a technique which I can guarantee will give you restaurant quality results. And it's one of my favorite ways to cook at home because you can simply set the appliance, forget about it, come back, your food is cooked perfectly, and then you can follow your cooking as normal. So you can do everything from meats to eggs to creme brulees, lemon curds, uh, vegetables. To be honest, it really is endless. And all that we are making sure is that we set the appliance to a temperature which can't overcook food. Now you may not know what that is, and that's why I'd recommend hop onto our website, or even if you download the Meal at Mobile app on your app store, there is a category there for sous vide cooking as well. So uh, hop on there, have a look, and you know, there's plenty to choose from, which is excellent. So it tells you what to do. It says place the condensate tray on shelf level one, and then place the rack on shelf level two, and away you go. Now, when we hop into sous vide, if I look at my temperature, I actually now have one degree increments. So sous vide is a very accurate method of cookery. So therefore our temperature needs to be quite accurate. So if I need to, I can cook something at, if I hop back in, uh, 58 degrees, for example, that might be from medium steak or medium piece of meat. So you can really tailor this in to what you want to cook. And as I said, you'll get the best results possible. So if you have some time on your hands, you know, on the weekend, uh, you know, entertaining or, or cooking um, for your family want to get some really great fantastic results sous vide is definitely a function that I would recommend using next one along is once again scaling message uh, reheating so this is where we can essentially replicate what a microwave does and in fact the results are very similar in both and which one is better or worse is really up to you as the individual to decide you know which is better or worse but Reheating in a microwave is fantastic. As you can see, when we select these programs, it gives us a category now of 80 degrees to 100 degrees. So it's still steaming food the exact same way, but when we select these, it's just restricting us from changing a certain temperature. So excellent. If you have wet food, pasta dishes, curries, lasagnas, um, you know, leftover Thai takeaway, stuff like that, this is where reheating is fantastic. Uh, obviously, if you have something crispy, that won't reheat uh, particularly well in a steam oven. It will get hot, but it will also soften. We also have here a little man. This is what we call our user programs. At the end of each cooking process, it will give you the option to save the program. So you might have a, a porridge that you cook every morning in your steam oven. You can save that as a program. So. This is fantastic because you can save up to 20 programs and if someone else in your household would like to cook uh, that porridge, for example, then they can come into the user programs. It will appear on this screen that it's saved. All they have to do then is place the food into the appliance, select that program, and it's all preset, ready to go. So if there is those regular things that you cook at home, it could even be rice, could be green vegetables. Uh, you know, it's, it's really endless in terms of what you do. User programs is a great part of the appliance to look into. 
if I move across once more, defrosting. So two uh, buttons previous, we were at reheating and now we are at defrosting. These are the two main things from my experience that a lot of us use a microwave for. And you know, as we can see here, it can be done in a steam oven. So when we look at the temperature here, the temperature ranges between 50 degrees and 60 degrees. So obviously we can't defrost it at 100 degrees. The food would defrost, but it would also cook. So this is a nice happy medium where our food defrosts in a pretty quick manner, to be honest. Um, how quick I can't say officially because it will depend on your freezer and also how you've frozen the product. But this is a fantastic way to you know, defrost your meats uh, or anything that's wrapped up in a packet or anything like that can defrost also really well. Timings do rival a microwave. They are pretty consistent. As I said, there's too many variables to strictly say, but I would just make sure as you would do in a microwave or something, come back to the food that you're defrosting uh, in the steam oven. Check it every 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how big the product is. Just give the product a quick uh, poke or prod to see how it's going. Because if we have that food fully defrosted, uh, sitting in a 50 degree appliance, that's obviously not ideal also. So obviously when you're doing this, um, maintain what you're doing. But from a food safety point of view, the safest way to always defrost uh, is in our fridge overnight. But knowing that we can speed it up in our steam oven is a great benefit. Here, if I hop across, change function, yes. I have just started descaling. So I'm going to cancel that before it starts. Now, that descaling process is what happened, is what happens for that warning that we've had before. So the seven uses. So at the end of the video, I'm going to get a jug ready to go. I'll pop the tablet in and show you that. Then I'll simply come back and press that icon. That's all you have to do. So very simple. And that icon there with those two arrows interlocking each other, you have the exact same symbol on your jug and that is where you fill the water level up to. As I said, I'll go through that so it should make uh, a fair bit more sense. We then have automatic programs. So if I select the automatic programs, we have a bunch of categories here. Now, depending on the model you have, that will determine how many programs you have but I would recommend that you start off with these automatic programs because you might simply be completely unsure as to what temperature and for how long to cook a product. So you might be cooking rice, for example, and you're not 100% sure what to do in your steam oven. If I select rice here, select OK, you then have arborio, basmati, brown rice, uh, parboiled and wild. So there's five options here. And you will find that in every uh, category that you select, there's also quite a few options within that category. So if I select uh, brown rice, for example, the appliance now tells me to place the rice and the water in a solid container with a ratio of one part rice to 1.5 parts water. So the quantity doesn't matter, provided we follow this ratio, we will always get uh, the same results. So this is one of the best things about the steam oven is the amount of food that we cook, it doesn't matter uh, in terms of the end result. So from a guesswork point of view, there is no more guesswork. So, you know, it makes it a lot more convenient. So you press OK once you've done that, place the food in the oven, select OK. Once again, that descaling option. Start now or you can finish at or start at if need be or I can show the cooking stages. So if I select this now, it's telling me that it's going to steam this at 100 degrees for 28 minutes. So brown rice being a harder grain will take a little bit longer to cook. White rice might only be 20 minutes, for example. So this is fantastic because you'll use these a few times and then you'll know exactly what to do and you might find it quicker to manually select 100 degrees, pop in that ratio and away you go but I would definitely recommend you look at these automatic programs to begin with, because that will mean you're getting the most out of your steam oven in the initial stages. The final button I would like to show you is this one over here. This is our special applications or further programs, however you want to call it. So here I have blanching, uh, bottling, disinfecting, proving yeast dough. 
So a great thing in which we can do in the steam oven is you might have some uh, some jam jars or, or pasta sauce jars and stuff like that. You can actually disinfect them in a steam oven, so essentially sterilize them. You might pour in some passata or some tomato sauce that you've made at home. You can then pop it back into the appliance and the bottling function and you've got sealed up bottles of tomato sauce or that could be a jam or, or anything like that. So these are things that traditionally you may have done on the cooktop and the concept is exactly the same in the steam oven. If anything though, it's more convenient because we can lay things out on the rack or on the tray, uh, cook a larger volume and it's also more even, which is fantastic. Uh, the proven yeast dough is there as well. So I mentioned before that we could prove yeast dough at 40 degrees uh, manually, for example, but there's also here as a program. So if I select prove yeast dough, you set how long you want to prove your bread dough, press OK, and that's all there is to it. So that's very simple. You'll get your pizza dough or your bread dough, pop it inside the appliance, and we'll get a nice dough, which has doubled in size. And then the last one there that we saw is eco steam cooking. So if you're cooking something for an extended period of time and you're conscious about saving some power, eco steam cooking is fantastic for that. Uh, situations like that could be if you are uh, either steaming your Christmas puddings at Christmas time or any really long cooking, even making a yogurt, it'll use a little bit less power. So there's plenty of options here. Finally, you have your settings. Shortly, I'll talk about uh, descaling and the water hardness and all that sort of stuff. In your settings, you will find your water hardness uh, settings and all that sort of stuff. So water hardness is there. Once you go into that, you can select a soft, medium or hard. So it's a really good idea for you to have a play around uh, with your controls on the appliance. Get familiar with what it's asking you to do. Because if you don't do this, you may not know truly what your appliance is able to do. And it can be um, just restricting you from achieving your absolute best. Another quick thing, here I have uh, one of our new generation 7,000 steam ovens. When you select your temperature, say it's 100 degrees, press OK. To set your duration or your cooking time, just simply select this arrow and you can see it pops up straight away. So you might say two minutes, press OK. So for example, my egg was 100 degrees. I then typed in two minutes, select OK. And that's all I do. For the pasta that I'm cooking at the moment also, I have 100 degrees and I set it for five minutes. So it really is as simple as that. We don't preheat the steam oven. That's another thing that I need to clarify. Reason being, if I do preheat the steam oven, I will lose all that excess steam. So your food goes into a cold appliance, you select the temperature, you select the time, you will then get perfect results. You need to mentally allow for the heat up time. So we can see here, I've set it to 100 degrees. It's heating up at the moment, it's at 68 degrees and it's counting up quite quickly. Once that reaches 100 degrees, the appliance will beep at you or a chime uh, to make a different noise depending on the model. Your official cook time will then start. So we factor in this heat up time into all of our recipes and timings that we give you. So there's nothing for you to worry about on your end. Just make sure that you allow yourself a few minutes uh, to factor in this heating up stage. And it is approximately five minutes on heating up. That can vary depending on what's in the appliance, but five minutes is a pretty good ballpark figure. So now in my other steam oven, my egg and my pasta are just about finishing in their cook. So we'll hop back to the bench, go through those, and then we can finish up. Okay, so our egg has now got uh, about three seconds to go, so I'm going to come and open this up. It's steamy. Okay, so we have our normal egg there, and this egg here literally slips out of the mold like so. So now we have a completely clean looking vessel. As you can see here, I've got my poached egg and my boiled egg. When I crack open my poached egg, We've got a nice cooked white, a nice soft yolk in the middle, so that's looking pretty good for something that's in, you know taken minimal involvement from you. Now boiled egg for the kids' uh, soldiers. Crack that in half, we've got a really, really nice gooey yolk. So both of these eggs, as you saw, 100 degrees for two minutes. The great thing with the steam oven as well is 
irrespective of the amount of food that you place into the appliance, your cook time is always the same. So if I had a dozen eggs and I wanted to, to poach four and to steam uh, the rest, or boil the rest I should say, I can do that. It doesn't really matter. Whereas that can be quite difficult on your cooktop. So this is one of those everyday uses where you can cook some eggs in the morning, we get that consistency every single time. And you know, as a bonus, it's super, super easy. So it's been five minutes or so as well and our pasta has just finished. So you'll see I've got a nice large amount of steam escaping the cavity. Don't be afraid of this steam, it's not pressurized, so it won't burn you or anything. It simply just looks a little bit daunting sometimes, but it's incredibly safe. And as you can see, it dissipates basically straight away. Now when I remove this tray, it's a little bit difficult for you to see on camera, but this is moving around quite nicely. So you might need a, a spatula or something just to move that pasta around. I've just positioned a, a sieve inside a pot for now. Obviously you'll do it in the sink at home. But I'll strain off this pasta. I can see really good rinse off. And I'm just going to pour this back into the tray. But now, none of this pasta has stuck. It's moving really, really free. It's quite amazing how this doesn't stick together. The assumption would be that we get one massive clump of pasta, but in actual fact, this frees up really nicely and it's some of the best cooked pasta that I've really had. The tricky thing with cooking pasta in the steam oven is, unlike your pan, you can't actually grab a piece to bite and try how it is. So we really have to rely on those cooking times that are on the packet for the pasta, but they are very, very accurate. It's one of those things on the cooktop, you pop your pasta in and the water cools down. So that cooking time is a little bit random, it's never consistent. Whereas in the steam oven, because the steam comes in externally, then into the cavity, it doesn't matter if you have one portion of pasta or five portions or more, the cook time is always the same. So I've had cases at home with pasta as well. I've cooked some pasta like so. Whilst that's cooking, I might be reheating a bolognese sauce or something in there as well. I've also had cases where, for me at home, I have a celiac in my family, so I cook a tray of gluten-free pasta, a tray of normal pasta, and also reheating a bolognese. So therefore I have three trays in at once. Everything has a similar cook time. Then at the end, I strain off the pastas, serve it all with the sauce, and my three trays go into the dishwasher. So it's very easy, very consistent, and one of those things that also makes less cleaning. Um, but definitely gives us a crack at home because you'll get more consistent results, and I'm um, pretty confident you'll enjoy the taste also. So you saw that our steam oven here is ready to be descaled. I think we had seven warnings when we were going through it. Descaling is one of those things that the appliance will ask you to do periodically. It's also one of those things that personally I wouldn't do voluntarily. I always wait until the appliance asks me to descale and then I'll do it. So descaling is really, really straightforward. All you do is you fill up your jug to the descaling symbol. Now the symbol is approximately halfway to two thirds of the way up the side of your jug. It's the exact same symbol that you will appear on your appliance as well. So the symbol in your jug and the appliance is exactly the same, so that aligns really nicely. Fill it up to that point with uh, cold water and then simply grab your descaling tablets, which are over here. So these can be purchased in uh, packs of six. You would have received uh, two with your appliance when you purchased it. All you have to do is pop them out there, really big tablets as you can see here, crack it out, pop it into your jug like so, and now we just need to wait for 30 seconds to a minute or so or until that tablet fully dissolves. Once that has happened, you pop that into the appliance, select the scale, and it tells you what to do. So how often you do this, it really depends how often you use a steam oven. For me at home, I'm using mine around about five or six nights a week, and I reckon I'm descaling a little bit less than quarterly. So every three and a half to four months, let's say. So for me, that's pretty good for the amount that I use it, but I also have changed my water setting. So here in Melbourne, our water is extremely soft, so I've changed the water hardness to soft. So depending on the location of where you are living and the hardness of your water, you can go into your settings, select water hardness, and then select the level that you require, and 
make sure you change that and that will then impact how regularly or irregularly you have to descale. But it's very easy. As I said, the appliance talks you through it step by step and provided we follow those instructions, nothing can go wrong. So this wraps me up for everything today. Everyone, thank you for watching. Hopefully you got some good insights just laying with that egg and with the pasta and you're having a better understanding now of how you can control the appliance. As I said, we can use the steam oven in a really fast method of cooking and also slow it down to a slower point. And it's really up to you in terms of how much time you have and the result that you're after. And also don't forget that just because we can cook food in the appliance, we can also sterilize uh, disinfect products. Uh, you can prove your bread dough, all that sort of stuff. So it does in some ways replace a microwave or is capable of doing what a microwave is also capable of with a few exceptions here and there. So I trust that this video was helpful for you. Please keep an eye out on our social media pages for more and I'll see you next time.